deluge activated. T minus 20 seconds and counting. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. And away we go. Our 23rd Electron launch vehicle is off the pad and on the way to space for this mission and progressing well on its journey to low Earth orbit. We've got a great daytime view from the rocket's onboard cameras as it approaches the point in its journey when it experiences the most amount of stress, otherwise called maximum aerodynamic pressure or max Q. Cleared max Q. There's the call out from Mission Control. Electron has successfully passed through Max Q and is continuing eastward off the coast of New Zealand. The first stage's Rutherford engines are firing red hot and nominal as we come up to a vital sequence of events in the vehicle's launch procedure. Electron will slow down just a touch before shutting off its main engines, what's called main engine cutoff or MECO. This allows for the clean separation of the first stage from the second stage before the second stage's engine lights up and propels the vehicle satellites onto orbit. We should both see those actions on screen and hear the callouts from our operators in mission control soon. Stage one propulsion is holding nominal. Standby for Miko in approximately 30 seconds. Fifteen seconds to Miko. Miko confirmed. Stage separation successful. Stage two ignition. And there we go, that's confirmation of successful MECO, stage separation and second stage engine start. You can see the space optimised Rutherford engine glowing hot on your screen as it carries on in space. Now since we've cleared the lower atmosphere we no longer need the rocket's fairing to protect the satellites and we need the fairing out of the way to be able to safely deploy the satellites. So soon that fairing will fall away as we get rid of the dead weight, let's keep an eye out for that. And there they go, Electron's fairing halves have been deployed. We've got a short time gap now between this event and the next one coming up for Electron's second stage, which involves swapping out the batteries that power the second stage Rutherford engine. The mission is continuing nominally though as we approach that next milestone, with the second stage travelling at a speed of nearly 10,000 kilometres an hour at an altitude of over 130 kilometres. If you're just joining us, we have had a great start to today's mission so far. 
Electron successfully cleared the pad at Launch Complex 1 just a few minutes ago, and we are now well on our way to space, having completed a successful pass through Max-Q, main engine cutoff, and stage separation to reach this point now in the mission. Electron's second stage, with the Black Sky satellites on board, is headed to a circular low Earth orbit 430 kilometres above Earth, where they'll join the rest of Black Sky's constellation of Earth-observing small sats, two of which we deployed on our last mission just 21 days ago. Twaddling bomb. Stage 2 propulsion holding nominal. We're coming up to a milestone unique to Electron soon, the swap out of the batteries that our Rutherford engines draw their energy from to continue, as our engineers say, chooching. The vehicle has run through the set of batteries we started with at liftoff, and so now the second stage of the vehicle needs to swap over to a fresh one to keep things going. We call this move the battery hot swap. You should hear that call come from Mission Control shortly, but keep an eye on your screen too, as often you can catch a glimpse of them falling away. Swap successful. And so there they go, and that was the call for a successful battery hot swap. Coming up in the next couple of minutes will be the second engine cutoff on the second stage, or SECO. This maneuver follows pretty much the same procedure as main engine cutoff, where the Rutherford engine on the second stage will shut off ahead of final separation of the vehicle between the second stage and our kick stage. There will be a bit of a gap between that final separation and payload deployment, as this stage separation places the kick stage in an elliptical orbit of Earth first. I'll explain what happens after that point once we receive confirmation from Mission Control first of SECO and stage separation. You can see the second stage Rutherford engine burning bright on your screen there, with Electron well on track to deliver the Black Sky payloads to orbit in around 50 minutes or so. The vehicle is travelling at uh, more than 19,000 kilometres an hour, with an altitude of nearly 200 kilometres, and everything is continuing as expected with our stage 2 burn. Voltage battery discharge holding nominal. A quick reminder for those who are just joining us, while our last launch was a recovery mission, furthering our development of a reusable launcher, this mission is not, but we will be attempting our first aerial capture of Electron in 2022, and we can't wait to bring you more information as we get closer to that mission. Meanwhile, Electron's vacuum-optimized Rutherford engine is putting in the work ahead of kick-stage separation in about a minute and a half. Entered stage 2 burnout detect mode. A check in on the telemetry in the top right of your screen and you'll see Electron is continuing on its way to orbit, travelling at a speed of nearly 25,000 kilometres an hour and an altitude of over 190. Now as I mentioned before, coming up next is second engine cutoff or SECO, which will see the engine on Electron's second stage power down ahead of kick stage separation scheduled a few seconds after. SECO confirmed.